Hey, I wanted to show you around some of the EXR foam sequence stuff I've been doing. Show you how the materials work, the lighting, that kind of thing. I'm going to play back the EXR sequence here so you can see it in motion in the editor. This uses the old method of getting EXR sequences inside Unreal, only because I wanted to use custom water bodies instead of planes. And there is a new method where you can just drag a, a sequence into your level and it'll do all the math and it's a great material and it's performant, but um, this is the only way I knew how to get it onto a custom water body. Um, and it works, you know, fairly performant, I'm getting pretty good frames per second, that kind of thing. Um, you'll probably want like a, a more modern CPU for this. Um, I've tried this on older systems and the, the playback will be kind of, uh, you know, choppy and weak. Um, because it can't keep up, uh, I guess, with the decoding. So you'll see some weaknesses here because this is probably the unfriendliest uh, lighting environment for it. The edges here look like water, but they're really just kind of sand until the foam meets it here. Um, but from this shot, it looks pretty good, and, and it um, I could show off like the the normal Mac lighting here. All right, let me show you the EXR source. So this is a frame from the foam EXR sequence. This is from a aerial shot uh, I found online of waves coming in. Uh, obviously, if you're going to use this for commercial purposes, sort out the licensing and all that stuff. But what you're looking for are videos that have the waves hit the shore here. And you want to make sure they finish their cycle up towards the edge of the frame and don't get cut off. Um, you'll see I, I caught some of the sand here. I was hoping to catch some of the you know, the way the sand can kind of dry off and all that stuff. Um, and what I did is I flipped it in the middle. I cut it in half. I flipped it so I could seamlessly place them next to each other on the beach. And that's pretty much it. Um, I went with the frame rate that it came in. A lot of them are 29.97, which is not ideal for Unreal. And there's some stuff in Resolve you can do to sort out some frame rate issues which I'd like to uh, mess around with. Um, I haven't had a chance to yet. I was actually using another EXR sequence in the last video that I posted. I didn't like the way it looked up close because it got kind of shaky. Um, you can try some video stabilization techniques and stuff like that as well. Um, but, you know, it's a work in progress. I'm going to keep at it. And eventually I'm going to probably do my own shots because I live pretty close to a beach. And I'm going to grab a drone or hire a drone pilot and take some cool shots and then um you know set them up to the way i want them so that's pretty much it for the exr sequence again keeping in mind you load them with the old school unreal 4 method all right let me show you inside the materials so this is the instance of my um video texture material there's a lot of parameters to mess around with that i set up um but um it's basically kind of a combination of a water shader and um uh, an EXR sequence shader, I guess, if you want to call it that. And there's a lot of controls here in this instance, but I think the easiest way um, to show you how it works is just to pop open the material graph editor. Um, and just browse around a bit here, and I'll try to zoom in enough so you can really see what's going on. So this is how you can get information out of the Gerstner Wave Generator into your material and this is like the key node here and this is me just telling it hey what water body are we using most of the time that's the ocean material um, i'm sorry the ocean um body which is um you know i usually put that in first so it's parameter zero these are parameters i made up to start controlling some of the wave wpo effects in the material and on my video sequence here, I'm not doing a lot. I'm just getting it to kind of wave back and forth a little bit to add some motion, mostly to try to blend the scene better here. Um, but let me show you, again, I'm just gonna back this off, and try to get a good view. That looks pretty good. And here's the controls for like um, the XY, the height, I can also set the, the, the wave Z offset 
um, a, a little bit further, mostly, again, for these inshore materials because they're following the terrain. Um, if you um, make the wave height too high, they'll start breaking through and it'll ruin like the illusion. All right, so let me keep browsing through the material graph editor here. Um, again, this is the source of the waves. And here is the RBT section. I learned how to do that from a great Thal effects video. I'll leave a link to it in the description. But what this does is it allows the custom water body mesh to follow the terrain pretty much exactly. Um, the custom water body mesh, I believe, is a procedural mesh that it um, the engine makes. And right now I'm just messing around with the um, landscape follow settings. Um, but as you can see, um, it, it, it kind of sticks to the landscape and um, helps sells the illusion of the foam rushing up and down the um, shore vertically there. A flat plane wouldn't cut it here either um, because you would end up cutting off parts of the animation and stuff like that. So um, this comes in pretty handy. And uh, I don't think you can do this with a any other mesh either because of the procedural nature of the custom water body mesh. And that's if you want to follow the waves. So one issue that can come up with this um, is mesh bounds. Um, on this these custom meshes, I had to set the scale pretty high of the custom water body or I'd have pretty bad flickering issues. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, you know, you can get into some scaling issues um, with that. But anyway, let me go back to the material graph editor. So again, I, I picked that up from um, Thoral Effects and you can see it's pretty simple and this is all dialed into the world position offset. And depending on what you're doing, I think I'm either multiplying it or I'm subtracting it. Again, this is still kind of a work in progress. So um, the, the great thing about the graph editor here is it's kind of fun to play around with different settings. Um, I tried to clean this up a little bit before I came in here. Yeah, you, know, you can see I still had, hey, what happens if I added this or that? Um, so this is all fallen into the uh, world position offset. And this is, let me just go back, make sure I get the whole chain. That's that. These here are because I wasn't sure why my runtime wave attenuation was breaking. I'd hit play, and um, you can attenuate the wave as they come in, depending on the height of the shore. And if you don't have a fluid sim in the level, it won't work. It'll work in the editor, but it won't work when you hit play. So some of these were me just trying to get the thing to work while I was playing. So uh, I could probably remove these, but I just left them in there for now. So let me go down to the real time normal mapping. Here's some depth fade stuff too. I've, I've played around with subtracting and adding. Um, There's probably a better way to get them to blend, I think. Um, but I'll have to mess around with that. <clears throat> this is the interesting stuff here too. This is the real time normal generator. And I, this is all from, um, I just copied it pretty much one from one from this function. And I couldn't use this for some reason because, let's see if I, I'll just do it. I'll tell you why. Um, because I needed a texture object for the height map, I think. Yeah, and it wasn't compatible. So anyway, it was easy enough to just um, transfer it over here and make a one-to-one -one copy. Uh, and I think it does a pretty good job of adding a um, real-time normal map to the EXR sequence. All right, I'm going to open up another level here. So this is the daytime level um, using the same EXR sequence. Let me play it back, show you everything in motion. Uh, obviously, the uh, lighting is way different, so... You know, I used a lot of the parameters to uh, get it to blend. Um, there's the loop, which is way more apparent during the day. Probably could have done a better job there, but I'll keep working at it. 
over here is a material that uses all the same stuff from the EXR sequence material. Material that tries to cover up the scene between the EXR sequence and the single layer water body material and the beach. Um, and here I'm lifting it up a little bit. Let's see if I can get it to blend a little better. Um, and I have some parameters set up in this material. Um, you know, opacity and emissive, etc. Just like the other one to try to get it to blend a little better. But another thing I've been messing around with is adding a RVT feature to the ocean material itself so you can dial back the shore, that kind of thing. And it's basically the same method from the other material. You load up an RVT from the landscape. Um, but this time around, uh, I was also experimenting with pulling the RVT, um, I'm sorry, pulling the uh, edge of the ocean back and forth in time with the waves. I also tried it with a sine wave, but didn't really do much more than what the existing um, stuff will do. And to set this up, and all you have to do is break into the material attributes, grab the world position offset, add your RVT, and then bring it back in. And in the material instance, if I type in land, I could start dialing back and forth how much the ocean follows the land. So depending on your wave conditions and the beach and stuff like that, um, I'll give you some more options for the material blending, or at least to try to make it look more organic. Hmm. Something's on a timeline. Um, every once in a while, um, I'll have the sequencer open, and if I'm selecting uh, actors from the level, they'll get put onto a track and to the sequencer. I'm not sure if there's a way to lock the sequencer, but if you know, let me know in the comments. So let me push this over here a little bit more. That seam is still pretty um, apparent. Again, I guess depending on the angle that you need to um, see this from, it might not matter. But I do have some parameters in the material uh, that I can set. You can also try dialing back the ocean, but you're, you're probably going to get a seam there as well. I'll dial it back a little bit. Just let this go. Push it back forward. And you can move the mesh around a little bit. Um, raise the vertical height up and down to see how it sits. See if it'll help hide the seam. Um, I should probably get into the opacity settings. That'll really help as well. Depth phase is not going to do much here. This should make a pretty drastic, yeah, it's going to make a drastic difference. Let's dial it back. And now it's starting to cover it up. Let's check out the other foam system with it. So that's starting to look better. Let's run the sequence a bit here and see it all in motion. I don't think I have that material covering the whole beach, so you'll still see a seam over here, or at least uh, a lot more of it. But you can see the material start to kick in a little bit more over here. And that, that hides it a lot better. So keep in mind this material uses pretty much all the same functions as the EXR one, except it's a still image and I'm just panning the texture around a bit. And the normals, uh, you know, like kind of like any other water um, shader. All right, I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. I'm hoping in a few months I'll have an inexpensive asset available on the Unreal Marketplace just for this kind of near shore beach thing. Um, but until then, um, thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.